Good morning, and thanks for joining us again for Adventures in Small Business here on ThinkTech. Great to see you again. My name is Jane Sawyer. I'm the District Director for the Small Business Administration here in Hawaii. Um, this program, Adventures in Small Business, is a co-sponsorship with ThinkTech with the Hawaii Small Business Development Center Network, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center with UH. So thanks for joining us for the program today. We talk about small businesses, their contributions to the state of Hawaii, and all different things about entrepreneurs and how it is to be a successful small business in Hawaii, how our business owners got there. Today we're joined by Catherine Walker, he is the president and CFO of Papalock, Oahu, Papalock, Big Island, right? Right. right. Glad you're joining us. Thanks for being here, Kathy. And uh, talk a little bit about your experience with doing business in Hawaii and how you got started. So Papalock has been in business here in the Aloha State for about 10 years now. 10 years now. We're celebrating our 10-year anniversary. And Congratulations! Boy, did that go fast. Uh -huh. um, how we started was was a very interesting story. Um, my husband, he is a, the co-owner. Um, he lost his home, unfortunately, in Hurricane Katrina. Oh dear! So um, he decided to take his insurance money and move to Hawaii. And so he was kind of hanging out for a bit, not sure what direction to go into. So I show up actually on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And I'm not really sure what's going on other than I'm just going to enjoy vacation. But um, it's actually a great story because we met and uh, we really connected it. And both of us had been single for a long time and we did not have children. So we connected on a, a wonderful level. And so we decided to make a commitment. Um, but with that being said, we're like, well, what are we going to do here? Uh -huh. <laughs> we're now you Hawaii. were visiting. You had just you were in a transition period in your life as well. Is that right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. an absolute yes. I was actually forced to exit the corporate world uh -huh. um, at that time. Um, in the heart of the recession, you know, most people uh -huh. were um, losing their jobs and everything. So I also my father passed away. So it was just kind of a traumatic time. But I'm strong, tough, but I, so I decided to uh, just look at the ocean and reflect, and I had my laptop with me, and I typed in entrepreneurial.com, mm -hmm. and that changed everything, wow. I mean, my whole life, turned my whole life around. So I, with that, I got linked into a franchise coach um, uh -huh. on the mainland, and she kind of asked me, because it was near Christmas time, you know, what are you doing? Um, you know, <laughs> emailing me, well, shouldn't you be selling me Christmas? But I told her the story, and uh -huh. uh, she said, um, I actually emphasize that I have a very um, extensive accounting background, finance. Mm -hmm. And she said, you, you didn't probably realize that you are the perfect candidate to become a business owner. Wow. And Had you ever considered owning a business before? Or not you were always even. looking for a job in accounting? I was always looking for position. a, yeah, just a steady job in accounting, you know, uh -huh. with, with paycheck. Never even dawned on me, it crossed my mind that I would become a business owner. So um, what this franchise coach did is she um, presented three businesses um, that were looking to get uh, make a presence here oh, okay. in Hawaii. And one of them happened to be Papalock. So she, t she showed us how to research the company, make sure, and it was a top rated franchise. Mm -hmm. And so I felt good about that because it had a proven track record and I kind of like a checklist, like to uh -huh. check off the boxes. Uh -huh. So um, Poplock apparently was getting a um, hundred calls a month in um, on Oahu, I, oh, I guess probably statewide with nobody here. Wow. So yeah. inquiries about getting territory, gaining the franchise uh, no, in Hawaii? Get there, no, they're getting locked out, wanting service. Oh. Oh my goodness! Okay, <laughs> so even nobody's service. here, but no, yeah, yeah, there was nobody. So there was here. obviously a lot of name recognition for exactly. There was uh -huh. a lot. There was already a brand brand recognition, so wow, that made it easy. So the due diligence I did was um, I actually picked up the phone and called people and asked who their locksmith was, and everybody was like, "Hmm, wow, hmm." Head scratcher here. Uh -huh. Maybe it was Bob's locksmith, Ted's, and uh -huh. so I really so. With that, uh, we really felt there was a need for services and for Papalock to mm -hmm. enter into the Hawaii market. 
So um, people were very responsive. The name, it's just, it's really easy to remember. Wow. So. so you had a couple of things that all of this was very new. You were moving to Hawaii. You weren't here at that time. Was, it, was your vacation your first visit to Hawaii? No, se several. Okay. That was so at least you were a little more familiar with it. Yes. So coming to Hawaii, um, going out on your own, not looking for a job, but deciding to start a business, starting a new relationship. <laughs> So you had quite a leap of faith with this. I sure mm -hmm. did. But you did a lot of research up front, so you were confident with uh, the risk you were taking. Correct, because the other businesses that were presented were not as recession-proof. Okay. Um, and feeling the recession right during that time what, you know, really wanted us to be very careful uh -huh. about what we're choosing because we need a business that will survive that. Mm -hmm. So people need, need to call us whether they you know, want to or not. Right. And that's what I, I always emphasize um, people that ask me you know, about s small businesses that uh -huh. you really should be very, uh, very consider something that's recession proof. If something, mm -hmm. um, if there's another business, say um, a hair, say a hair, you know, hair styling. Or yeah, hair salon on. styling. Uh -huh. um, it, during that recession, um, that's the first thing that's going to stop. Right. Probably, you're, yeah. you're just going to say, um, "Okay, I'll just I'll stop, do my my own hair." Uh -huh. But in Papa Lock, if you're locked out and you lose your keys, you have to call us. <laughs> you, you have to call somebody. Right. You have to get in the house, or yeah, you know, yeah, you got to um, get into the car. Uh -huh. so. Get in the car, and wow, so a lot of research, getting out of your your uh, safe zone there quite a bit. Yes, exactly. But it was it was like. Um, unlocking the possibilities right there, you know? It so, sure was, yeah. So, and this is a business then, um, you went through the franchise process then. Correct. And, and kind of generally speaking, what are the steps that you reviewed the, po the, the possibilities, looked at the contract, talked to the company? What else did you do to decide that franchising, why was franchising a good option, I guess? Yeah, franchising it can be quite expensive. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people would choose to kind of do want to do this on their own mm -hmm. but I this franchise was was top rated mm -hmm. and um, I also part of the due diligence process I called other franchisees uh -huh. too and okay. I asked them a lot of questions and and uh, I talked to someone who was probably one year in business somebody had been in 10 years okay and so I, I got a lot of feedback on how it's working mm -hmm. and what's going on mm -hmm. and um, then we we went to Louisiana Papa Lock was born actually in Louisiana it was uh -huh. it was formed by two police officers that were getting asked um, constantly to unlock their car uh -huh. but after a while you know liability issues come into play mm -hmm. and they at that point they decided to form um, Papa Lock and just sit. Uh -huh. There was a there. new opportunity there, right? As well. To uh -huh. to actually do that. So so the process. We went to um, the franchise or headquarters, and we went through franchisee training with them mm -hmm. too. We went through everything, and a lot of this is is, is all new. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to set up credit card processing. There's all these things, but mm -hmm. you know, we had a manual. Uh -huh. with, with a checklist. And okay, so that appealing <laughs> checklist. That I appeal, can yeah, cover so all I can't those bases. A, right, yeah. You know, were there any surprises and things that you needed to do to start up a business? I mean, I would think as an accountant, you'd be, you know, dealing with accounts and, and supply and demand and seeing how all of those cycles go. But were there things that you didn't expect in mm -hmm. starting up? Yeah, that's a great question, too, by the way. Um, we actually, when we started, okay, well, marketing's got to be number one. Mm -hmm. uh, we were very conservative. We didn't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. actually, anyway, to go buy, you know, massive equipment for mm -hmm. auto locksmithing or um, equipment for um, housing, mm -hmm. for big locks and stuff. We weren't really sure. So when we started um, advertising, uh, we sort of built our business based on the need and the calls. Uh -huh. And what we found was the need, the auto locksmith, hands down. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I mean, needed that. Not just the car door locking, uh -huh. but actually the keys, because we originate dealer tip keys. Oh, okay. All so right. if somebody is stranded at the beach and their key falls in the ocean, mm -hmm. um, we can come to them and originate a key on the spot. 
okay. for them. So, wow. Now so, that's a good service to know about. I didn't know that. You know, I'm usually just happy to get the door of the car open, you know, when I've done something bonehead like locking my keys. In <laughs> and the most car, people are you know? very, very happy with that. It's very, 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 very super, superheroes. <laughs> but the keys, people really needed the keys too. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, so that's where we kind of focused our energies on mm -hmm. as far as um, marketing. So you've been very, very responsive to identifying customer needs. So we first set up on Oahu, but you are island-wide. You are mobile. You respond to people need, needing a response quickly. So you, you commit to getting out to, when a call comes in, to responding within an hour. Right. Uh, identify when you'll be there. Um, are all your mobile vehicles clearly marked or, you know, technician come out? Yes, that's what really sets us apart is um, mm -hmm. we require all our technicians to have professional okay. uniforms. Um, marked cars. I mean, people tell me, I see your cars everywhere. Uh -huh. I'm like, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And um, because we strategically place um, everyone in districts all over the island, we can actually make that mm -hmm. our ETA. If somebody's mm -hmm. uh, somebody has a district to the west side, so um, that person, that technician or two, will cover that area. Mm -hmm. And we have somebody, of course, in town and then somebody in on windward side mm -hmm. too as well. So okay. we have all our, our bases is so really covered. So it sounds covered. like one of the very effective marketing strategies you have is delivering the best customer service so that people will see you, use you, word of mouth gets around, right? Exactly. And so you just were telling me a little bit earlier that you've had some great response because you're a now a favorite. Yes. we're. Okay. we're it was a big surprise. We're Hawaii's. We were Hawaii's best 2018. Mm -hmm. um, Reader's Choice from the Star Advertiser. Okay. So we were very excited because that, for, for us, yeah, that's the actual um, readers. These are the customers that are getting mm -hmm. our service that are voting. Yeah. For, so they're, you're getting that rave awards. reviews and it's public. It, right. Uh, yeah. That's yes. great. Congratulations. Yes. And the online re reviews are, are really great too. Mm -hmm. And we respond very carefully. Even if there's not such a great review, mm -hmm. um, we will respond immediately and we'll try and talk to the customer mm -hmm. and, you know, work something out, explain, you mm -hmm. know, what's going on. And, and identifying how important that is, you do focus a lot on having somebody respond and make sure that how you're seen on social media right. is responsive, you know, available, accessible, and, and uh, share those those positive response from your customers. Is that right? That's, that's right, yes. Mm -hmm. I do have an SEO firm that watches um, all our traffic on our website and you know, re watches all the reviews. So, mm -hmm. so he's on it so we can respond right away and try you know make things right or, or just tell people thank you, uh -huh. that, you know, for um, you know, identifying some of the, the actual drivers uh -huh. there and giving them praise. So that that's really wonderful. And who doesn't like to have a thank you or a pat on the back? That's a really good thing. So we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about some of that in our next segment, a little bit more about the franchise, some of the challenges that you've overcome. Um, Kathy was also in our SBA Emerging Leaders class previously. So that we're recruiting for that right now, Kathy. So we're going to talk a little bit about that experience. Um, how you found that application process getting into that because you found that accessing the resources available to a small business owner or entrepreneur um, are very valuable. And uh, so after our short break, we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Emerging Leaders will be starting up in April and application process is now open. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Just a simple form to fill out and send to SBA. So, I was fairly simple at first, but there was an interview involved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we drill you. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing you got to know is you got to have a, um, a, it's not for beginners. So we're going to talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that process. It is like a CEO or a mini MBA class that uh, SBA offers to uh, small businesses across the state of Hawaii at no cost. So it's a real good thing. And, it was a uh, wonderful program. I'm and, so blessed. You know, so. Um, <laughs> Anyway, we'll be talking a little bit more about that process and just some of the some of the steps that Kathy took after being in that class as well. So I think we're just about ready for break now. So um, 
We'll be talking in just a few more minutes. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on ThinkTechHawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to At The Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at five every Wednesday where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Okay, thanks for joining us again. We're here talking with Kathy about unlocking the possibilities of entrepreneurship. And uh, one of those steps that uh, Kathy took <clears throat> in, in growing her business was to join SBA's Emerging Leaders class. It was a couple years back, but uh, the class with 14 or 15 other students at SBA every other week, it required quite a commitment from you. We were looking at bringing together small business owners who had been in business at least three years, who made at least $250,000 annually, up to a couple of million. So it was a broad range and had to have at least one employee. Now, employees, you've grown from you and your husband running the business to have several employees. We at have this 10 time. now. <laughs> 10 employees. So 10 that's, employees. that's yeah. pretty good size for small businesses here in Hawaii. Um, what did you find was, you know, was the class helpful in dealing with that business growth? What did you like about the class or some of the? Uh, the class mm -hmm. was, was really great because um, a lot of small business owners really got caught up in the day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. And you're forgetting about the big picture and uh -huh. a plan in place. So what this um, Emerging Leaders program did was it got you thinking outside mm -hmm. the box and actually developing a growth plan mm -hmm. and um, while we were doing that you know I we all came up with ideas we mm -hmm. also um, were segmented off with in CEO groups too right so uh -huh. yeah so we have you know friends friends and fellow um, business owners you uh -huh. know for life in yes. that and we could exchange um, information and ideas. Mm -hmm. So how was the structure for you? We'd meet in class and discuss a topic. There were expert panels that come in. And so you're exchanging a lot of ideas. You're expected to be involved and talk about your business because it isn't like you're doing some abstract case study. You're talking about things that are actually going on in your business, right? Right, exactly. So sometimes it's like burying your soul in front of some of these other business owners, but they're all feeling often the same thing where you surprised by that? Did that make it easier to discuss I some think of those it, issues? I think, it, I think it made it a lot easier too uh -huh. because you know you kind of feel like you're already the only one that's that's facing these these challenges and you really aren't uh -huh. and and I love the outside um, out box ideas because somebody else maybe they don't have exactly the same challenge but mm -hmm. they have they may have had it before and figured out a solution and mm -hmm. they can they can share it Mm -hmm. with us. So in the in the classroom we go through like 13 different sessions every other week and then you meet with your CEO group either virtually or um, whenever is convenient for that group uh, to discuss specific issues or often takes off on its own and your own conversation about issues that uh, the group identifies. Is that correct? That That is correct. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I did during that program was okay we need to have a backup blacksmith we need to have somebody else it's okay just, just in case you know mm -hmm. anything happens so during that time it's like the light bulb went on and i you know i researched all our resumes and the pool and i uh pulled out our best um roadside technician i mm -hmm. looked at his background i'm like wow this this guy he's got an auto technology background and it's all happening. Uh -huh. And so two months later, he's, he's sent to the East Coast for locksmith training. Mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, he's like our best locksmith ever. Wow. And he was very young, too. So he's, we're, you know, he's kind of growing up 
Mm -hmm. uh, in the business. In the business. <laughs> yeah. So he's found a career path. Right. Well, yeah, you know. which his parents should be very proud of. And uh -huh. we put him in a TV commercial, so um, not to get off track, but with marketing, um, uh -huh. that's where we really got our start was um, on TV. Uh -huh. we, that was a big leap of faith to mm -hmm. um, a big investment, something right. new, you know, right. not knowing how it really works when you're on the other side of the screen. Exactly. <laughs> but it was the most exciting time in mm -hmm. my life when mm -hmm. I would see the commercial on in uh -huh. the morning news uh, uh -huh. while I'm working and then the phone rang. I mean, uh -huh. those, those were the days before we actually had a call center mm. too. So we were, we were actually answering our own phones. Yeah. So it was very <laughs> exciting to see, wow, it works, okay? Uh -huh. yeah. People are We've watching seen. this. That's yeah. great, that's great. You have mentioned too, I mean, the company growth um, over the 10 years that you've been in business now has also been kind of a difficult time because we hear all the time, finding employees is tough. And HR is one of those things. The human resource management piece is always critically important when you start adding employees. And through the emerging leaders cohorts, we've found that year after year, the small business CEO, that's one of their biggest challenges. What, did, what have you learned and what were some of the solutions that you came up with? And, and maybe tell us a little bit about how that has evolved or come about. So those 10 employees are happy to stay with you. Right, that's a great question, and it took me a while to really learn this and also take a leap in faith with this, but with this tight labor market, uh, retention is huge, is absolutely huge, and so um, I was a little bit resistant, well, I guess a lot of resistance, because mm -hmm. we just recently did this la last year, was partnering up with an HR firm, company, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. actually will take, will do the payroll, mm -hmm. um, and take a lot of the, the administration work you mm -hmm. know, off of the owner. But the best part of that is because they, since they have the ability to take advantage of large company benefits mm -hmm. with the high volume rates. Mm -hmm. And so right now we can offer that. We can offer, um, you know, med of course, medical, dental, and they have choices, not just say Kaiser, they mm. have HMSA. So it, it allowed you to put forward a benefit package to your employees and have it professionally managed as well. Um, so that made it, your workplace is appealing to people exactly. too. Exactly, usually, because I mean, I've noticed some of the, them are going on a year mark now mm -hmm. and they're not leaving. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I'm so, so thankful mm -hmm. for that. But I, I truly believe it's, you know, uh, the because of these benefits, they're not gonna be able to find those benefits anywhere else. So mm -hmm. they're gonna think, twice about that, that they're, you know, before really they move good. on or right. go somewhere else. Yeah. Because yeah. so. that can, that can really um, add to and augment just what they get in their paycheck right? Know, in a significant way. A lot of small business owners are fearful of that. You know, they think that they couldn't go there. Um, but this would be a, a good thing um, for you to recommend or you would recommend would to other businesses to check them out? I would absolutely recommend that, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. because it's, it really, I mean, it might be a little, uh, a little difficult transition at, mm -hmm. at first, mm -hmm. but um, after everybody's on board, it just goes just on autopilot and mm -hmm. um, I, I, everybody just seems to be really happy with that. So. Okay, terrific. So an HR solution for you that really worked out and particularly as we the unemployment being, you know, so low, not a lot of movement in, in the job market. You've got something special to offer. That's a great takeaway. Embrace those ideas, unlock those possibilities. <laughs> so terrific. So Emerging Leaders played into that. Again, Emerging Leaders uh, uh, application process is open now. It's open. Deadline is coming up around March 20th. Class should start around April 17th. It is a commitment of time. It does mean you meet every other Tuesday. You've got homework. It's about 100 hours of time invested. But then we graduate and take a lot of things and those growth plans to put in place. You've worked off yours and, and seems like it's done pretty well for you. It actually has. <laughs> it really has. Um, mm -hmm. You know, expanding to other islands, um, you know, that's something, you know, I thought about that. But until you actually put it down on paper, it's amazing what comes about when you uh -huh. when you have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so the big island came into play and now that's 
we're, we're a family-owned business now. So uh -huh. my, my brother-in-law and my sister now are, um, are managing the big island. So, mm -hmm. and um, I, you know, the next island logical would be with Maui. So okay. we've got, we've already got some people that have approached me. And uh -huh. so we may be now in a master franchisee position, mm -hmm. which I, I didn't really think that was possible. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, not when you started just thinking with the big question, should I be a small business owner just 10 years ago? Huh? Right, no, never, yeah. never entered my mind whatsoever. Oh. So, so we're really, really excited uh -huh. about all the possibilities that have come uh -huh. about. You know, uh -huh. it's just amazing. Terrific. So, well, I'm glad that SBA has been able to contribute to that experience in a positive way. Absolutely. So if anybody in, you know, have questions, interested in learning more about the Emerging Leaders Opportunity, with the U.S. Small Business Administration, you can send us an email, expression of interest to um, Hawaii General at S or Hawaii General, spelled out H A W A I I G E N E R A L, Hawaii General at sba.gov. You have until about March 20th to apply, and there will be interviews, and you could join a very interesting elite group of entrepreneurs and study with us and develop your own growth plan to unlock your possibilities. Thanks again for joining us this week. Kathy, it was great to have you. Thank if you. Any it was great being here. comments before we sign off? Well, I, one last um, takeaway from the, the SBA Emerging Leaders Program that also, um, I also led me into being accepted at the 10,000 um, Goldman Sachs program and Boston uh -huh. and being interviewed as a prior SBA Emerging Leaders graduate, that pretty much opened up that door to just get into that slot. So I furthered, you know, my growth plan um, with the, through that program the following probably yeah, following year okay. after that. So I mean it was just wonderful. And so you would encourage entrepreneurs everywhere to continue that lifelong learning, invest in yourself, and uh, tap into the resources. Absolutely. There. There's, yeah. there's a lot of resources. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Wishing you continued success. Thank you, Jane. Sorry. So welcome. All righty. Thanks for having me.